Today I look into balancing a road bike wheel. Is it a marginal gain or a must do? So first up I'll clarify this. Wheel balancing is different to wheel truing when your wheel is out of alignment. Let me show you the difference in that. When you've got a buckle in your wheel and you're riding down the road, we all know that, your wheel does this. That's called out of true. When your wheel is not balanced, it will spin and it will want to hop along the road. So when you get new tires for your car, they're balanced. New tires for your motorbike, they're balanced. But when you've spent even more money than on your car and your motorbike on new race wheels for your road bike, are they balanced? Typically, no, they're not. I put this question to Raoul last week. Here's what he had to say. Okay, Raoul, I'm into wheel balancing my wheels. Yeah. Is it worth my time? I think so, yeah. yeah it is? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, the energy lost, energy saved, we want to... Uh... Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, all the energy comes from you. So if you can minimize, you know, the energy, um, you're gonna be better off. So if the wheel's out of balance, it's putting a force into the bike. Um, that force has to be counted by you, the rider. So that energy is coming from you. All right, thanks, mate. So it's all about efficiency of the system. In a car, it's about fuel economy and tire wear. On a motorbike, similar, and stopping the vibrations. On a road bike, we are the energy system. So any energy put into counteracting some imbalance, we pay for that in time and speed. A few years ago, I picked up a cheap Head 3 tri-spoke off eBay. Only cost me a few hundred dollars, great wheel. But when I got it, it just didn't feel quite right. There was something when I grabbed it and spun it in my hands, took it around to Stuart Vaughan, AKA the V-Train from Hawthorne Cycling. Back then with my old Nokia phone, I took a before video. You can see the wheel really shaking around. We went through the balancing process. Here's the after video. Beautiful. That was quite a big difference on a high-end road wheel. We went through the rest of my wheels as well, found the same imbalance, and we fixed them all. Ever since then, I've always balanced my wheels. Is it worth it? That's up to you. Today, I'll take you through the same process as what Stuart used on my front wheels and the rear disc that I've got to balance the 808 front wheel I've picked up off eBay. And then we'll have a look at Vaughn's Roval 40 race wheels. I think you'll be interested in the rear wheel especially. All right, let's get stuck into this with the process. So we don't have all the science of a wheel balancing machine to help us out today, but this is pretty easy in itself. Put the bike wheel up on a jig, Make sure it spins freely and just see where it balances out. And there's no real guessing on where it's actually gonna sit. You'll find 95% of wheels, it's the valve area and the reinforced area there that adds the weight to the bottom there. So let's see how out of balance this actually is once we get it up to speed. We've seen it with the static test there. Well, effectively a static test, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll rip this up to speed. That's moving and school's out. So let me just open that up a little bit. So if I'm pushing that there, I can feel that weight. I can really feel that weight pushing on my finger. So even though it's only a little bit of weight, it's still there. There's still an inefficiency in this system. When balancing the wheel, we do the whole system. So it's the rim, the tire, and the valve, and pumped up to race pressures as well. Once we know our heavy spot, which is the valve here, we go straight across to the other side. So we break out the blue tack strips. We go straight across the other side. And fix those to the inside. Now experience tells me that first one's not enough. So we'll go half the blue tack that I have. And fixing it to the inside here, make sure it doesn't fly out when we're spinning the wheel around. Okay. No, it's still not enough. It's still not bringing back to... Give it a light spin. Still not really enough. That's pulling down again. So that's not enough. Oh, we'll go the whole lot. Again, give it a gentle spin. That's looking pretty good. It's not finding a center there at all. 
Now using the non-scientific method that we're using now, that's probably the best we're gonna get it. That might be just a bit too much. That did stop down there, so let's take a little bit off. It's definitely not stopping on that at the bottom, which is good. It's... Oh. Okay. Another gram or so, give or take. We'll measure that in a minute. Close enough for now. Let's give this a spin and see if there's those same wobbles as before. Wheel up to speed. And that's dead still. Pushing it off to the side just to get a bit more amplification of that, but nothing. That's spot on. So now we need to measure the amount of blue tack we put on there to know how much counterweight to put on the wheel. Okay, that indicates 14 grams of weight. So rather than stick blue tack to the wheel as a permanent solution, I've picked up these golf club weights off eBay for about $5 and they have some adhesive on the back. They're about three grams each. So for $5, 23 grams. So what we need is 14 grams of these stuck onto the wheel. So we find the opposite side of the rim. That's where we wanna go. These weights are around three grams each, so we'll need about four and a bit. So we're done, it doesn't look pretty, but it's on there. Let's see how we go. Up to speed. And that's looking pretty good. Probably go another half gram, but look, let's leave it at that for now. I don't wanna to get too OCD on this, but that's done the trick. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. It's looking pretty ugly. A quick fix would be a simple piece of black gaff over top. And there we have it. Having a bit of gaff over top helps stick those things to the wheel as well. They won't be flying anywhere. So there's the 808 done. Let's now have a look at these expensive Roval 40 carbon clinches. I think you'll be surprised. So to save time of running through another front wheel, I can tell you the front Roval on this is out just as much as the 808 was. But it's the rear we're gonna look at right now, and this may surprise you. So these wheels are Roval 40 Rapid CLX. So if you weren't a believer in balancing wheels, have a look at this. That is pretty shaky. You can see the whole bike, even at lower speeds, is moving on me. What the hell? These are expensive race wheels and some pretty good tires as well. That's not right. Again. In my opinion, that's horrible. If I spent $2,000 on a pair of wheels, they'd be going back if they were shaking that much. But given these aren't my wheels, I'll just try and fix them instead. So let's get this rear wheel up on the jig, we'll balance it out with some weights, and we'll see if we can take that shake out of the system. So even at low speeds, it's quite evident the balance is not right in this wheel. Alrighty, let's take a punt on where this is going. Again, back on the valve. Yep, 
Alrighty, so given the amount of weight that was actually swinging, I'll go maximum blue tack straight away. Was that in the center or was that just a little bit off? Let me try and... No, the center's good enough. Okay, so we go directly across. What was it, 14 grams of blue tack? How are we looking for balance now? Hmm. Maybe a bit much, 14. This does depend on how good your bearings are on the wheels as well. If your bearings are grippy, you're not going to get a good result because they'll sort of grind around to a stop. You need some smooth bearings for this to actually work. But that is not recentering anywhere. I say we're out exactly the same. So 14's the number. Let's put another 14 on this. Let's see if we can get rid of those shakes. Got it. Try and amplify that a little bit. I think it's good. I think it's good. On the 808, I put a bit of black tape over the top. You can use tubular glue as well to stick these to the rim. If you're worried about aerodynamics, I guess you can put dimples on these little things if you're that worried about it. Marginal gains, remember. We'll leave these like this for now, just for our test to see if we can get rid of those shakes on the back of the bike. All right, here we go. Spot on. There's no shake. That is a world of difference, and I'm sure that came through on the camera as well. The chain wasn't shaking, the bike wasn't resonating at all. That's done really, really well. So would you do this to your shop bike to and from work? Nah, probably not. Would you do it on an indoor trainer? Maybe, if you've got a rear wheel trainer. Would you do it if you're going for an hour record in a smooth velodrome? Absolutely you would. Outside time trials, and things like, hey, the Indian Pacific. You don't want to be traveling across Australia with a bike that's slowly doing that. So I'd recommend for all those guys, have a look at your wheels before you take off and make sure everything is optimized. I know I'd prefer 5,000 kilometers of buttery smooth than 5,000 of just that little shake in your backside all the time or even in the front handlebars. A few thanks to a couple of people for this one. Harry Frick and Stuart Vaughan for many years ago, sort of looking at wheels that were not working quite right and getting them sorted out with wheel balancing. They said it was good. I put it on my head three. Well, we saw the difference with the head three and we've seen the difference today between just two wheels. Definitely worth doing. And to Raoul Lucia for adding his two cents on the topic as well. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon riding smooth.